What is up, everybody? Back with another top 10 list here. And today I'm going to be giving my 10 favorite albums from 1999. Cool year. We'll give some honorable mentions at the end as usual. Here we go. Starting off my list, number 10 is Heaven in Flames by Judas Iscariot. Really cool black metal band that I've been talking about a lot on the channel lately. Um, it's a one-man group, all instruments and vocals done by a guy named De Kennison. Great musician. Um, his voice fits the music very well. I think uh, this has like a very good mix of the very raw, chaotic um, black metal, but also a really nice sense of melody as well. Um, looking at the songs, and Eternal Kingdom of Fire, the opening track is fantastic. Just mesmerizing riff and melody of the song. Just is awesome. Um, Gaze Upon Heaven and Flames is great, and probably uh, From Hateful Visions are my three favorites, but top to bottom, I like this album a lot. Heaven and Flames, number 10. Next up at number nine is Metalhead by Saxon. Awesome album here. The band was on a freaking tear at this point. The run of albums they went on from uh, Unleash the Beast in 97 to The Inner Sanctum in 2007. Fantastic. All those albums are great. This one here, no slouch. You know, freaking very heavy. The song Metalhead, title track, got to be one of their heaviest songs of all time. The riff is amazing. Um, the whole band sounds fantastic. The, the production's great. Conquistador, another awesome song on here. The chorus is fantastic in that one. Uh, Biff Byford, as I've said before, has never had the greatest voice, but I think he's always been really good at uh, coming up with awesome sounding vocal melodies and choruses. And uh, Song of Evil's great. All Guns Blazing is amazing. The riffing in that one's awesome. Um, the vocal melodies, again, from Biff are fantastic. Probably the best song on the album, but again, top to bottom, a lot of really good stuff on here. Metalhead, number nine. Next up at number eight is Onwards to the Spectral Defile by the band Seerth Gorgor. Really cool black metal from the Netherlands. This is their debut album. Um, really good production. The drummer's a freaking machine. Very melodic, but also uh, super heavy and brutal at the same time. You know, looking at these songs, the declaration of our never-ending war is great. The opening song. The second one, or the second song, Winter Embraces Lands Beyond. A lot more melodic, awesome riff. The guy that's singing uh, has some really awesome screams, I think. Uh, his voice fits the music perfect. And probably a hymn to the children of Hendel, or Hendel, I'll probably mispronounce that stuff, but great stuff. Uh, if, I, if you like classic melodic black metal, I definitely recommend this. Onwards to the Spectral Defile, Sirith Gorgor, number eight. <laughs> Coming in at number seven is Evil 1999 by the band Toolist. Super underrated Norwegian black metal band right here. I did have their 1998 album Mysterion on that list. So I do dig these guys quite a bit. Um, looking at this album, you know, there's a lot of great songs in Norwegian. So tough to pronounce, but Taron Toolist is really awesome. The riff in that one is amazing. Uh, easily the coolest and best song on this album, in my opinion. So check that one out if you're not familiar with this. Drog, um, Salme, some of the other standouts, you know, the front man of the band uh, goes by the name Bloodstrup. his voice is really cool evil dark haunting stuff um fits the music really uh, really well in my opinion his guitar playing is great as well he does all the guitar just uh, top to bottom really cool album great band evil 1999 number seven Coming in at number six is Unholy Crusade by Lord Belial. Amazing Swedish black metal band right here. One of my favorite black metal bands of all time. And with this album, I think it is definitely their heaviest, most brutal release to date. Um, you know, just super heavy, brutal black metal, some death metal elements here, but also some very melodic stuff as well. Looking at these songs, the title track, gotta be uh, one of my favorite songs of theirs of all time. One of their heaviest, most chaotic, awesome songs ever. Uh, War of Hate, uh, a little bit uh, more mid-paced, melodic type of song, which is really cool as well. Um, Death is the Gate is awesome. Bleed on the Cross, super heavy, brutal one again. Divide at Impera, uh, that one, again, more melodic. Night Divine is freaking heavy as hell. There's a music video for it, some awesome, like, screeching, chaotic, distorted guitars, kind of Slayer style there at the beginning, and just amazing, very heavy riff. Um, just an awesome album here from top to bottom. 
on Holy Crusade. Highly recommend it. Number six. Next up at number five is Nine by Merciful Fate. Killer stuff here, and currently it is their last album to date. They are back together right now, so possibly in the future they could release another one. But if this is their last, you know, it's a great way to go out. The riffs and solos all over the album are fantastic from uh, Hank Sharman and Mike Weed. Great duo. Of course, Michael Denner is not there anymore, the classic guy. But I think Mike Weed, fantastic replacement, great player. He also plays with the King Diamond solo band right now who uh, King Diamond on this album, as usual, sounds fantastic. One of the best and most unique voices in all of metal. Opening song, Last Rites, one of their absolute best of all time. Easily top 10. The riff is amazing. Super heavy, fast song. The freaking solo in there is scorching. An amazing solo trading off between Mike Weed and um, um, Hank Sherman. Awesome stuff. Other songs on here that are standouts, I'd say, are Burn in Hell. Um, Insane is an awesome one. A House on the Hill, Sold My Soul. A lot of great stuff here. Great album by them. Nine, number five. Coming in at number four is The Fragile Art of Existence by Control Denied. Awesome band. Um, it's basically just death with clean vocals. Sounds very similar to The Sound of Perseverance, the final death album, which came out a year before this in 1998. It has three-fifths of that lineup. Richard Christie on the drums, who's a freaking machine. Amazing drummer. Shannon Ham on guitar. And, of course, Chuck Schuldner on guitar as well. But the difference here is they have clean vocals from a guy named Tim Imar, who has a really good melodic voice, um, fits this music well, and I think he's just got a good voice. And um, Steve DiGiorgio on the bass, who played on Human and Individual Thought Patterns in 1991 and 1993 by Death. But this album, the musicianship is off the charts. Amazing. It's ridiculously good. Looking at some of these songs, Consumed, uh, Breaking the Broken is amazing. The title track, Believe, really top to bottom. Great album here. Fragile Art of Existence, number four. Next up at number three is The Gathering by Testament. Fantastic album here. Um, easily one of my favorites from the band and several of my all-time favorite Testament songs are on here. Um, Down for Life has always been possibly like my favorite freaking Testament song. Amazing riff, uh, freaking overall rhythm to that song. Super heavy, amazing stuff. Um, DNR is awesome. Um, Eyes of Wrath. Really top to bottom here, Allegiance, Riding the Snake is a really cool one. The lineup on this album is freaking ridiculous. You got Dave Lombardo on drums, who is a machine, as usual, one of the best drummers in metal. Um, freaking James Murphy on guitar, who's a virtuoso beast. Eric Peterson is awesome as well. Chuck Billy on vocals, I think, has a good voice. Mixes in some of the like deeper, guttural stuff on here. Not as much as the previous album, Demonic, which was them trying to go full death metal. Here, mostly back to uh, Thrash. Still some death metal elements. A bit groovier than you know some of their previous, earlier material that was super thrashy. But uh, yeah, and Steve DiGiorgio, if I didn't already say that, is also on this album on bass. So amazing lineup, amazing album here. The Gathering, number three. Coming in at number two is At the Heart of Winter by Immortal. Amazing album here. An absolute onslaught of riffing from freaking Aboth. The first album with him on guitar. Uh, Demon Ads is not there at this point. So Aboth does everything on the album except for the drums, which are done by Horde. Just uh, top to bottom, this is freaking awesome. This does also start the uh, thrash elements within their music. Still black metal, but you can definitely hear the uh, thrash elements there. Just so many amazing riffs all over this album. You know, Withstand the Fall of Time, opening track is amazing. Solar Fall is fantastic. Where Dark and Light Don't Differ, one of their absolute best songs. Super heavy, amazing riff. Just uh, top to bottom, love this album. At the Heart of Winter by Immortal, my number two of 1999. And some honorable mentions I've got written down here. I'm just going to run through the bands uh, real quick. Releases from Overkill, Dark Throne, um, Children of Bodom, Sacramentum. Marduk, um, Sabbath from Japan, great blackened thrash metal band. Um, the Creators album from that year, Enderama, I think is actually pretty good. Um, let's see, Metal Church released a pretty good album that year. Immolation, Emperor, Dimmu Borgir, Abigor, uh, Limbonic Art. This band here, Ancient with the Halls of Eternity. So, uh, I mean, if you dig deep enough, 
there's a lot of good albums. Might not uh, seem like it when you just glance at 1999 from the surface, but once you uh, start doing the research, there's a ton of really good albums. So on to my number one. Taking the number one spot is Criteria for a Black Widow by Annihilator. Freaking amazing album right here. Criminally underrated. It does feature the return of Ray Hartman on the drums and Randy Rampage on vocals, who were both on the debut Alice in Hell back in 89. Um, and of course, Jeff Waters on guitar is one of the absolute best guitarists in all of metal. His tone, his riffs, his melodies, his solos. So amazing. Dude is like easily one of the best shredders of all time. His solos are so just majestic and smooth and fast and perfect but uh looking at these songs most of them are great but a few standouts i'd say are bloodbath the opening track which is an absolute scorcher amazing song back to the palace which is a sequel to the song the fun palace which is really cool punctured is great um title track is pretty cool nothing left is amazing sonic homicide um double day really all these songs are great this is an absolutely fantastic underrated album that i highly recommend if you brushed off the post never neverland annihilator material which a lot of people seem to um, definitely might as well start with this. This is an amazing one. Criteria for a Black Widow, my number one of 1999. And that does wrap up the list. So as usual, I'd like to know what y'all thought. Give me your rankings in the comments. And until next time, thank you for watching.